Hey, it's Mazzy. This is Mazzy's Mix number 31. These are the uh, variety gift pack, in a way, the multi-layered editions. I'm showing some new records I've got in, a couple reissues, a couple of new records, uh, a selection of three books, one of which I'm going to get into deeper on a uh, future video, but I want to showcase it. I want to talk about possibly a, a reissue that just came out of the best record of the last quarter century. The best album in the popular area of music of the last 25 years. And I'm going to end up with a little bit of a uh, Steely Dan opinion because that seems to be the uh, the album du jour and the reissue, I did not get the UHQR, so it's about an original pressing. I have the very clean, very first best pressing. And this new, uh, I think I got it for $25, actually, $25, $26, of the digital, oh my God, heads exploding, a version that you can get, that any mere mortal can get. That might be a lot, but originals are going for a lot right now, too. And then ending up with... Finally, a box that Mazzy approves of. Stand by for that. That's at the end. First, I want to start with PJ Harvey. I've been all on, on PJ Harvey since her first album, Dry, came out. 92, 93. British singer. If you don't know her work, she's in the vein. And now, of course, everyone's... She's an original. But you can hear influence of Patti Smith, of Fiona Apple, of Yoko Ono less the abrasive to some people. I'm a fan of Yoko's, as you may know. Uh, folk singer, avant-garde, post-punk, and just very original. She, she can go from really angelic, melodic vocals with just a electric guitar to more abrasive stuff and to more upbeat, in-your-face, um, post-punk-like music. And... The last, what, two years or so, two, three years, they've been reissuing all her albums. And what's brilliant about it is all the albums are matched with a separate album, separately sold, so you don't have to buy it, of a record of demos and alternative versions that match the album. So if you're talking about dry, there's dry outtakes. If you're talking about Let England Shake, uh, there'll be Let England Shake outtakes of the separate album. And actually... Dry and, well, I like them all. There's some great stuff in all her records, as far as I'm concerned. What's great about this, this is an album, and it is PJ Harvey, B-Sides, Demos, and Rarities. Six LPs. The obvious question that one may ask is, well, isn't this like a repeat of all those single albums of demos that came out? No. No exact takes or outputs or demos at all and this is six lps and this is friggin fantastic i play this now i got it friday i played it twice all the way through highly recommended now let me talk about this she'll go from an instrumental electric guitar surfy thing to an, a brash walsh of of post-punk intensity she does a demo on here, a version of Highway 61 Revisited that almost sounds like it's over miked and loud and distorted, but that's the way it was recorded and it actually works. So all the recordings sound really good. They're not all what some would say the best premium sound, but they're really, really good. There's a few demos that you can tell they're more home demos, but th this is an archival uh, box set that is very, very successful. The pressings are all flat. What's nice about it, this is a brilliant box set. It's a slip case type style. And the individual LPs have their own covers. Let me go through them real quick. They have the details uh, on the back of each cover, the tracks when they were recorded and what they're from. Just go by the photographs here. Beautiful artwork. Really well done. Here's the other one here. Now, just to show you one, and also they come in beautiful uh, polyline sleeves, all quiet pressings. 
I have no complaints whatsoever. Very wonderful collection. That falls right into this release that I was so excited about. Pre-ordered this a couple of months ago when it was announced. Vinyl Me Please. I am not a member of Vinyl Me Please. I either order the extra cost as a a la carte item or through a friend. And uh, only one or two have I ever bought post, post VMP. And this is Fiona Apple's Extraordinary Machine or Extraordinary Machine, depending on how you pronounce that, where you live. It's a two LP set, which was obviously from the CD. My only disappointment, and I get why she did it, but this when this album came out, there was an original full mix by John Bryan, who collaborates with her frequently. And she decided to skip that and remix it and change some things around. And I don't remember all the details, but there is a John Bryan mix that I kind of like better. I have a download of it. It's, it was available for a while in the ether, in the world, in the in big internet world. I kind of wish they did like a, a two for thing, but obviously the artist, Fiona, doesn't want that out there. I think they'd get a little carried away on their color options. I mean, this is fun and everything. And I guess, you know, you understand why they did it because it kind of goes with the motif, the, the color motif. I could do without that. Um, one of my records is completely flat. One has a slight bow, but nothing that affects the sound. So I'm fine with it. But I think they could concentrate that on that a little better, maybe when they have their new plant and maybe that'll be something. But I love this. I love this record. I love that. I think it's Vinyl Me Please. All my Fiona Apple records are Vinyl Me Please releases, which brings me to another question, another, just a question. I don't want to say criticism because the artist and the artist management negotiates with these labels like Vinyl Me Please. Fiona Apple is, an, to me, a major artist, and she's an artist that deserves to have her records in print for everyone to buy in record stores, and you very rarely see Vinyl Me Please in the stores. And I can understand Vinyl Me Please uh, being licensed to do maybe initial edition, but so far they haven't, as far as I know, reissued her catalog for the masses, for the stores, where you could buy them uh, separately from Vinyl Me Please because it is a VMP exclusive. I just don't think, um, I could see them doing a first press and then even a year later, do a uh, regular press, I think, was she on Sony Music? Uh, but um, that's my only um, criticism. And it's something between the artist and the label. So I wish that was available for everyone who wants it easily. Yep Rock has been putting out some great Nick Lowe stuff, little by little reissuing that that middle period, the old age period, the middle age period of the great Nick Lowe, one of the great singers, one of the greatest songwriters, I think. People don't really think of him as so much like that. Of course, from Brinsley Schwartz to Elvis Costello production, collaboration. And this is Nick Lowe at my age. Perfect name for this music. This is his period where he's a crooner. He's like late night thing. He's like a modern day version of the Sinatras and the Nat Coles of the world. Now, it's not jazzy like that, but he's writing these great romantic songs, these love ballads, these personal, intimate, uh, just wonderful uh, songwriting, wonderful arrangements. And it's just, it's just a pleasure to put this on, have a cocktail in the evening or late at night or a Sunday morning record. Really beautiful record. I, I'm glad that they're issuing uh, this period, and I hope they continue. This that. is the third in a series so far that I've got, and these are EPs. I get these out of the UK, and this is the Christmas Holiday EP by Envy Partridge, of course, uh, the main or the, uh, the self-declared leader of XTC, and he has this label, Ape. They're very slim sleeves, no inner sleeve. It's like they're EPs, basically. So I, I guess I'm going to need to put it in a uh, polyline sleeve so people don't freak out when I pull it out in the future. But it's a beautifully designed series of EPs. The other two EPs are outtakes, works in progress, and really wonderful sounding music and great songwriting. What a great, great uh, songwriter. This is his holiday record. Let There Be Snow, Through the Winter World, Cool Yule, 
and Unwrap You at Christmas, Andy Partridge. Available now, only as an import as far as I know. Uh, you can search online and uh, I get them from the United Kingdom. The best album released in the last 25 years. The best popular album. Maybe not so popular. And I'm not going to say commercial because it's, it's not that at all. Back in 1970, it was my first trip to the UK. One night I was in London walking around and I stumbled across this music venue, bar type venue called Dingwalls. I'm sure those of you in the UK who know of, of it, I have no idea if it still exists. And I went in and there was this band playing or was about to play uh, called Japan. I'd never heard of Japan. I watched the set, I had a great time. They didn't like bowl me over, but just great rock and roll, a little glammy. Uh, very stylized in their visions of that period of 1978. I subsequently bought that first album in the United Kingdom, came back and played it. And I didn't really follow them much beyond that until a few years later, there was two albums back to back that I, th that I think were more mature and more realized and really unique in a way at the time. And that is um, Gentlemen Take Polaroids and Tin Drum, two uh, albums by the band Japan. Of course, the main singer, David Sylvian, singer, guitar player, uh, Steve Jansen, uh, it, it was actually, is actually Sylvian's brother, changed his name, uh, Sylvian changed his name for artistic purposes, and Mick Karn. And they put together an amazing uh, series of albums then. They split up eventually. Uh, they come back and put an album out under a different name. It's actually Japan. And it's uh, Rain Tree Crow, which is fantastic. Anyway, David Sylvan does a series of albums. He gets involved with a more electronic artist, some avant-garde artist, some free jazz artist, and just works with an amazing array of very interesting musicians and partnered with. And, he's, and David Sylvan has this intense baritone, low voice that at the right moments, just gives you chills. Some of his music is slow, it's moody. Uh, some may be de think it's depressing in a way like Nick Cave can be. Nick Cave gets more uh, moody, but he can get riled up and crazy and post-punky and in a different set. And, and Nick Cave obviously, you know, rails about religion and sexuality and and spiritualism and you know all this stuff. David Sylvian doesn't do. He's a little more obtuse, and more minimal, definitely. Well, 2003, I'm in Amoeba in San Francisco, and I pick up a CD of this album, Blemish. I didn't know anything about it. I hadn't bought a uh, David Sylvian in a while. This is the first album he did when he left Virgin Records. There was some uh, stress there. <laughs> Same with um, XTC, by the way. And he ended up putting records out on his own. I think in the beginning, obviously CDs, I think they did a very, very small press run of, of 300 to 500 records of this album, Blemish. This has been on my Discogs wish list for about a decade, and it's up there. You can find it for three to four or $500. I ain't gonna pay that. I've been so excited when this was announced earlier this year. It got delayed because there were some printing errors. And to me, I will say this officially, this is probably, there's like a asterisk if there isn't one, my favorite album of the last 25 years. It is slow, mooding, some may think a downer depressing album, not what he's singing about, but the mood to it, there's electronic artifacts. Yes, it's digital, uh, interesting collaborations here. Sometimes there are sound effects where it sounds like the record's scratchy, but obviously that's a digital effect intentionally. Beautiful poetic lyrics. Blemish, The Good Son, The Only Daughter, Late Night Shopping, Trauma. A gorgeous album. I, I want to say not for everybody because it isn't for everybody. But you never know what people are going to like. I just think it is a gorgeous piece of artwork. What a voice. What a vocal style. And then 
uh, I think a year or two after this came out, I, I almost wish this was a double record and they included this. This is only on CD for now. We'll see if he ever decides to put it on vinyl. This is The Good Son versus The Only Daughter, The Blemish Remixes. And they're very different mixes and extensions of the Blemish album. And uh, both these together. I would play these in the car on every road trip I was driving alone. It's got that mood late night. Uh, it's just, just, it, it just, it, it makes your, the insides of you all like <laughs> fuzzy and warm. I know I'm overhyping this, but I'm overhyping it because I know what I like and I like to express the music I like. So Blemish, 2003 and 2004 with the remixes. And it's a beautiful, in some cases, a, a Japanese feel to it a little bit. A Japanese electronica. Um, no big beats. Very minimal and extremely beautiful. This is the best record of the last 25 years. Here's the Literary Mazzy, the little book section of some recent music-related books that I picked up. First, I want to say, first and foremost, actually, all these are great in their own way. I think two of them are no-brainers. The other one may be for a, a specific uh, audience. But this is Bob Dylan's latest venture. I mean, if you read Chronicles, the first part of his autobiography they wrote, what, 15 years ago? It's been so long. We don't know if he's going to get a volume two. This is amazing. Bob Dylan wrote this. And it's the philosophy of modern song by Bob Dylan. And he goes through a hundred and something songs and he'll write these essays about it, personal essays. I'm almost finished with the book and the, it's visualized. I mean, it goes from crooners to rock and roll to standard. Of course, if you ever heard the um, Bob Dylan radio time hour that was syndicated, I believe, and I think you can find it online in places. I used to play those, uh, download them and play them in my car all the time. And it's a fascinating tour of musicology and the love of Bob Dylan has for music. And in Chronicles, he really talks about a lot of artists that you'd be almost surprised that Bob Dylan would be into. But just the love of music he has, the knowledge of music he has. I was told that I need to pick up the books on tape version or the audio book version, because I think Bob Dylan, if not reads all of it, reads a good portion of it. And I think I'm gonna uh, download that and take it on my ride down to uh, San Francisco in December. I think this is just a historical reference and a real personal uh, series of essays on popular music, popular music in America. Just wonderful, wonderful book here. Now this next book, I'm just gonna give you a brief talk because I'm going to be doing a feature on this at some point in the future and this is uh, Revolution, The History of the Turntable Design Faden written by Gideon Schwartz. Three years ago Gideon Schwartz did a book on Faden Book, the art book publisher on hi-fi. It's almost like a museum art piece of hi-fi equipment, historical gear, beauty of art, industrial design. This is the same thing for turntable design goes through all these amazing uh, designs, like Bang & Olufsen, that sort of wonderful modern design from 1972, Denon, Dual, basically any turntable manufacturer, and it goes by decades. So you go up until even, you know, you go to the DJ uh, techniques, classic techniques, turntables of the 70s into the 80s, to the modern industrial design thing and going back to gramophone and jukeboxes. It's just a, it's just a fabulous, uh, beautifully photographed and designed book. Again, it's like a museum catalog to the world of turntable design. This is something you ought to put on your holiday list for yourself, at least. It's a beautiful um, coffee table st style art book, yet it's really well written and worth, uh, you know, a, an overview of the history of the phonograph and the turntable. So I'm gonna get into it more later. And lastly, this is a bit of a vanity project um, of a Beatle, former Beatle wife, Patty Boyd. Patty Boyd met George Harrison on the set of A Hard Day's Night. They got married. The song Something was written for Patty Boyd. Obviously then she 
ended up dating and marrying Eric Clapton and the song Layla was written about her. Can you imagine being someone and having those great songs written about you? Uh, this is basically a photo essay of her life, from her modeling career to later in the career. So it's got images of the Beatles of her from the fashion world design to newspapers. And it's just, it's just a, a wonderful book of the time. Obviously it concentrates on the 60s and 70s uh, and beyond. There's a great, uh, as a model picture uh, with the Rolling Stones. And just, it's really well designed. And it's a fun photography book. Those of you who watch me know my love and my work for photography. It's a picture she took of uh, George Harrison in Friar Park. But uh, fantastic book. This happens to be a copy I got out of the UK. There she is now. And she was a photographer as well, as a hobbyist, but um, this is a signed copy of Patty Boyd, Patty Harrison, Patty Clapton, Patty Boyd. It's just a great view. Patty Boyd, my life in pictures, and it reflects uh, her image as a model, as a, obviously a wife of two of the most famous rock stars in history. So it's kind of an interesting photo book. Those of you who know my interest in photography will understand why, and the Beatles will understand why I am. Um, decided to uh, jump in and order that. Steely Dan, William Burroughs created the name. It's the name of not any dildo, but a specific dildo in uh, was it Naked Lunch, one of his books. That's where they got the name. End of 1972, Do It Again becomes a, becomes a pretty big hit. This breakout album, Steely Dan, Can't Buy a Thrill, kind of a studio band that was pulled together. Um, Gary Katz produced it, and it came kind of out of nowhere, but that song was so great. I remember hearing that song at the end of uh, 1972, and I think in early 73 is when I got the album. I finally got a record store job in 73, but I bought it before that. I just love it. I have an original ABC copy. I play this a lot and it's in pristine shape. Even the cover is beautiful. Now, uh, ABC did change the label in 83. The first original pressing had the rectangular ABC with sort of the rainbow effect on the, on the triangle. And there was an overlapping period of that label. And then of course in 1973, they put the little uh, children's blocks ABC and they overlapped for about two years. And this is the same matrix as the original one. And it's really, it's really a wonderful sounding record, I think. Um, really lovely. Great percussion, great uh, guitar solo by Danny Diaz, who used some sort of uh, sitar effect, electric sitar effect, but just a great song. The whole album's good. Mix of some singers, vocalists, and everything else. This sounds amazing. Now, I'm not getting the UHQR. There's a uh, audio uh, file pressing 45 that Analog Productions put out. I've heard good things about it, but I'm not into the double 45s that much, especially $150 in a box and all that stuff. But I wanted to check out the UME, Universal Music, Geffen Records, $30 record. I got it for $26. Bernie Grumman mastered it because he also mastered the UHQR and someone else cut it to vinyl. And this is from a digital high-res digital file, which is surprising. I don't know why they wouldn't bother going all the way unless it was something to do with the licensing for the UHQR. I have no idea. I wanted to just get a feel for this. I'm going to probably give this to a friend of mine because I don't think I need it. But I wanted to see, is it a good record? And I tell you, if you have an original like this, you don't need any other version. Of course, I'm not one who usually ABs records. So since I got off that high horse in the last uh, few days with the hot stampers, I find that they're not necessarily better, but they're different. And it, if you're not a being, you don't know what you're missing, If even if you're missing uh, something. But in that test, watch that other video, uh, the hot stamper didn't always win. So it's a, it's a preference. It's a preference and it's gears and ears and all the good stuff. This is a very good $30, $25 record of Steely Dan. And this record hasn't been available uh, uh, newly in a long time. So... If you don't have this album, you can't find a clean copy, you don't want to spend $150 for a double 45 in a box, I would say I highly recommend this. There is a difference. This has more depth. I mean, I, again, I, y y these phrases and these uh, 
descriptions are like describing wine or coffee or aroma or something like that. I find that the soundscape on uh, the new digital version is more narrower and not as open and doesn't breathe as much as uh, the original ABC record, but it is still is very good. The percussive is really good. I think the percussive is tied on both. I give the edge to the original again. I mean, the vocals on the original are just better overall. Uh, this isn't over, uh, it's not hot, it's not bright, it's got a good mid-range to it. It is a really, really good thing. If you didn't listen to this, and if I didn't have this, I would be very satisfied uh, to have this copy right here. So I think I just wanted to throw my two cents in the ring here. Now I want to end with the box. I've bug people with my opinion on these big boxes that hold one record. And I might have discovered a Mazzy approved box in Mobile Fidelity. I'm going to show you a bit of a video. If you haven't uh, watched the unboxing of the new Mobile Fidelity Thriller One Step, you owe it to yourself to do it. Mike at the InGroove, uh, the record retailer in Phoenix, Arizona, does a weekly new release thing. It's a great way to find out what's coming out, what's new. He did an unboxing, he hasn't heard it yet. A side note here is I haven't ordered the uh, Michael Jackson one step. I think the original sounds really good and I'm a fan of half the record, so I don't plan on doing it. However, this video made me think, oh, maybe I could order that. The box is actually pretty good. They slimmed it down. So I wanna show you a little of this video just to give you an idea. Probably do a poll maybe on the second video on the box, maybe even on this video of your guys' preference over this box versus the original 45 RPM box. This box to me can be improved. So it can be modified if you're gonna do a 45 RPM. You can actually make it a little bit wider to where you can actually get two sleeves in it. Look how thin but I like is. this box for a couple of reasons. The first reason is when I open this box and I'm gonna do it now, I don't actually have to take the plastic off of the box. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get my uh, razor blade here. Brilliant. And I think this is awesome. Uh, I think this is awesome, not only for the 33 RPM, but like I said, I'd be down with what you guys think in the comments below. I'm going to put, like I said, I'm, I'll put a poll up on this. I'm pretty sure I can do that. I'm down my... Okay. <laughs> Let me show you what we got here. One of the things I'm gonna do as well is when this album is released, I'm gonna give one away. I was He's gonna give one away too. Copy early. So, it's thinner. It's a slip case. There's no waste. Does it need a slip case? Well, they did it, luxury, I get that. Anyway, I just wanted to give a little shout out. Now, my guess is it's something MoFi is not gonna continue with with their Eagles and Van Halen and all that because especially with the Eagles people. They bought, what, half the catalog already? Three or four of the records? People's heads are gonna explode if they bought three of the one steps and want the whole Eagles collection, and if they all of a sudden shrunk them down to this format. Um, so I doubt that's gonna happen. Anyway, thanks for watching uh, the boxing, the Dan, Steely Dan's, the greatest album in the last quarter century, and PJ Harvey and all the other little things. So thanks everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, all the good stuff. Mazzy loves you. Thank you.